Welcome to a finals prediction video. I'm here with Scotty Whitelaw, co-commentator for the event. Scotty, it's been a great event so far, but we've got some final predictions on our hands. So where would you like to start? I think let's, let's start on the, uh, the men's category. Obviously yeah. yesterday, uh, completely intense day on, on the men's side. Um, England losing out to Northern Ireland in their semi-final. Northern Ireland taking a 12-0 lead against England, something yeah. which I don't think anyone was predicting or expecting. And hats off to Northern Ireland, they played a phenomenally flawless match. Um, and with that, it was just something... Northern Ireland, they, 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 weren't, they, they were a different team. Hmm. I've never seen the Northern Ireland squad play at that. All of them, you know, every single ball that was thrown at them, you know, they were taking catches, but they weren't catches that were easy to take. They were left and right of them, hmm. and they were just picking them off. And England, they just unfortunately just didn't have an answer for them. They tried changing up, tried changing a couple of tactics, but Northern Ireland just kept pinning them back. So because of that, obviously Northern Ireland have booked themselves a place in the men's final. On the other semi-final, we had Scotland versus Austria. Was close all the way through to sort of like the latter stages of the half, but Austria then just put the hammer down and you know saw them get themselves through to that final as well. So the men's final, Northern Ireland, Austria. Obviously, we saw them playing the group stages, and we know how close and how tight that was. It was close right to the end, right? right it was almost end. you know set set for set difference. And Austria. Aust and obviously, you know, like you said, going set for set difference mm. and it will going down to that final set, that absolute final set. So it is going to be key to see whether who's going to win that. At the moment, I'm, I'm seeing how Northern Ireland played yesterday and obviously talking to them last night after, after their victory against England, I think we're going to have potentially a Northern Ireland victory. So that's going to be my prediction on the men's side. Yeah, and I think, you know, I'd, I'd love to agree, but for me, Austria are uh, so much more tactically switched on. They've been here in the final, they know the pressure of the final. And for me, looking at what their men's achieved in the groups and how close it was, I think they've got that edge, you know. For me, Austria, tactically great, physically great, they're all in great shape. And I think it's all about the recovery from yesterday. We've had a day recovery, which is always nice to see. You see that. This in men's final normally, it's a couple of hours after the semi-final, they all look mentally and physically drained. But I think uh, Austria for me will take that men's, but you know, nonetheless it will be a great final. Absolutely, so again, for me that will see that prediction. Northern Ireland are only just going to edge out on Austria, I don't think by any means it's going to be a clean sweep no. for them. But I just can't wait to see them action on court. Yeah, and, and from that I think we got to head into the mix, you know, England's mental game just wasn't as strong as we've seen in the past they just weren't as switched on you know it's it's hard to take a defeat especially from northern ireland and then and go into another uh, semi-final this time they met austria in the semi-final and we know how that normally pans out it's normally the final event but this time they meet in the semi-finals and and what a great semi that was you know it's it was not not more not as more oppressive as um the other semi-final and I think, you know. Absolutely, and one thing that you saw after England lost that semi-final in the men's category, you know, mentally you saw them, even, even the women's uh, side, uh, side of the England camp, that they just, well, you know, they were destroyed, they were heartbroken over the result, and likely, likely to be so as well. But they've got to put that in the back of their mind. I remember last year when I was in my semi-final, lost to England in the men's, and then jumped straight into a semi-final this league. Got to put it straight to your back of your mind. You cannot have that at the forefront playing on your conscience because you just can't focus, you can't deliver what you need to do. And unfortunately, England, again, they just didn't have an answer for Austria. There's a few moments where they were touch and go with them, they were looking like they were in it, but again, Austria performing so great in that latter half of the match, and again, just all those England yeah. came out. And I think you've got to mention in that game came the injury of Beth Dix, you know. I think we're getting updates on how she is at the moment, whether she is playing or not. I think that could be a big miss for uh, England there in that in that third, fourth place Ab layoff. Absolutely, and unfortunately, Beth, uh, I think it was a, a scratch retina uh, potentially. You know, she did get her off court, was able to walk off herself. Whether she will be playing, we don't know. Hopefully. England, you know, she's a key asset to that England squad, Indeed. so they are going to want her on court. But England, you know, they do have other players who can step up and deliver and perform just as well as Beth. Yep. You know, they do have the likes of Meg White, Harry Bignall, Roxy Millington, Abby Gower, all of them are capable of doing Beth, Beth Dix's job as well. So, yes, they are missing a, a 
key crucial player for them, but they do have others who can step up to. So on to the other semi-final that happened at the same time. We didn't catch much of that. That was NI Scotland. Uh, from what I've heard, it was very close, neck and neck. But uh, NI, you know, put the uh, pedal down. They made a couple of key substitutions, and apparently, from what I've heard, Northern Ireland ran away with it a little. I think that early on, they Scotland were definitely in the yeah, sure. Yeah. And obviously, you know, having the likes of Lisa McMaster, John Day, uh, sort of, you know, very key players to that mixed setup. Yeah. Um, you know, they were able to sort of push back any threat Northern Ireland had, but Northern Ireland just kept picking up that traction. One thing that we have seen from Northern Ireland mixed this year, which is not something they've normally done, done, is where they've gone ahead and have actually put more of their key men players into that setup. And yep. they've now gone, actually, yeah, you know what? We've seen Scotland do it. We see England do it. We need to start sharing our players across the board. Yeah. And Northern Ireland, you can see how how much that's actually benefiting them across the entire tournament. It means they're much fitter. They've been away. They've been working on that. And that has allowed them to actually grow and develop even more as a, as a squad. So, but that semi-final, we saw a you know, close match, but Northern Ireland edging out Scotland there. Yep, so final predictions on the mixed final. We'll have... NI and Austria yet again in the mixed final. Something a little different, you know, we don't normally have Northern Ireland in more than one final, you know, when they do make it. This year making two against Austria. Uh, for me, I think I've got to go Northern Ireland here. Like you said, they've got some key players in there and I think these Northern Ireland three men, you know, when partnered with these strong women from uh, Northern Ireland, I think they can be a really good mm -hmm. six. And I think for me that that is going to push Northern Ireland to make that that mixed, uh, mixed final and, and win that. Okay, and for me though, I think I've got to back Austria on this one. Uh, you look at look at the players they've got, obviously Stefan Lettinger, yep. uh, Buda, Kremser, players that can all go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one another there, but I think the key thing that is going to see Austria really excel is going to be their women. You know, they are not frightened of the men, and I think we're going to see them taking some big catches and even also getting some incredible hits on the Northern Ireland men. Northern Ireland, very dynamic team though. Uh, obviously, we see that in their men's setup. It's yeah. whether their women can have that, and that is going to be, I think, one of the key factors in where Austria probably are going to come out on top, in my opinion, because you know the Austrians are very fast, very rapid with their throws, and if you're not on your toes and you're not planning on being dynamic, I think they will fall short. Okay, and I think from the Austrian women, I think that goes into a good tie-in with the women's final. We'll see England women's face Austria women's. We know it's the grudge match. It's, it's been the final for a couple of years now. The past two couple of years, Austria taking that in. Great overtime sets But this year. Do England have the mental capacity, the mental strength? Do they, do they have that to take it? And, and I'm sure, you know, we'll, we'll see in terms of... Of course, I mean... You've, I think you've got to take yesterday into account for this. Yeah. Obviously, two real heavy losses there uh, for England in their semi finals. The women are going to want to go out there and get redemption for the men. And I think, you know, they are up for it. You know, they can definitely do it. Austria, though, again, very strong squad, very drilling, very tactical, very intelligent with a lot of their plays that they, they choose to go with. Obviously, they're going to look at using that, that really effective double wing counter that they use. But England, they'll look to shut that down straight away. They'll have their wing players come up and find that high pressure, something that we've seen Kyle Wise and Leffy Dix do so well for them so far. So I've no doubt I, we expect them to continue to do that play. And my prediction for it, I can't call it. I think it's absolutely neck and neck. England on home turf, which gives them a, does give them a huge advantage. But the Austrians, of course, we know how they can really get behind, get the fans behind them. So too close to call, in my opinion. Yeah, and and I'm sure there'll be great finals, Scotty. I think you know you're very right there. It's going to be so close. You you probably can't call it. Like I said, it it's gone to overtime two years in a row now, and I think we could see something similar this year. I do. I, I know both of these teams have worked so hard. The women, especially, you know, they hate losing, as does everyone. And I think these women, like you said, want the redemption. They want to take that goal home. And for and for me, you know, I think that the the heart from the England uh, Lions ladies will will push them to the victory. I think it'll be a very good final. But 
it'll, it'll be a close I one. I think all three of our finals are going to be incredibly tight, incredibly close. Yeah. You know, rarely few things in them. Uh, of course, we've got our predictions, but you know, we, we have been wrong throughout this tournament already. Well, has to you know, we didn't predict, you know, the finals that we've got. So it's going to be interesting to see who does come out on top. Exactly, but I'm sure people will be uh, tuning in to the uh, live stream. And I think we've got a, a great day of a couple of positional playoffs, Scotty. But I think everyone's looking forward to those three finals. Absolutely.